Leia here from leiafirstside.com slash MCAT and in this video I'll show you how to solve squares and square roots on the MCAT without a calculator. When it comes to simple math like multiplication and division, it's easy to find shortcuts but it's also easy to fall back on the long form multiplication and the long division. When it comes to squares and square roots, it's even more important to know and understand the shortcuts because you'll have nothing to fall back on when you're not allowed to use your calculator. One of my MCAT students brought up this question in a recent tutoring session. Find the hydronium ion concentration in a 0.05 molar solution of acetic acid given an acid dissociation constant of 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. I will discuss this concept in my MCAT chemistry videos at layerforsci.com slash MCAT chemistry, but for now let's focus on the math. We have a 0.05 molar solution and a Ka of 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. We'll set up the equation using the chemistry trick of Ka is equal to x squared divided by the initial molarity, where the H plus concentration is equal to x. I like to simplify my equations by isolating x and then plugging in the numbers to solve. So we'll multiply both sides by the initial molarity and then take the square root of each side to isolate x. This gives me an equation as follows. x is equal to the square root of the initial molarity, which is 0.05, and a Ka of 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. And this is where my student froze. We have a square root and we have scientific notation. So how do you proceed? I'm assuming that you've already watched my video on how to multiply scientific notation. If you haven't, you can find it on my website at layofersci.com slash mcatmath. Starting with multiplication, we have 0.05 times 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. This can appear daunting, but don't let it scare you. Remember the trick of times 10 divided by 10 that keeps the overall value the same? That's exactly how we're going to simplify this and here's how we're going to do it. To get rid of the decimal from 0.05, we have to move the decimal two spaces to the right, which means we're multiplying by 100. To make up for it and keep the overall value the same, we do the same thing to the number on the left, but in reverse. We'll divide by 100. The way we divide by factors of 10 is dropping the exponent one value for every factor of 10. So if I have 10 to the minus 5, and I want to make that smaller by a factor of 100, 10 to the minus 5 becomes 10 to the minus 6 for 10, and 10 to the minus 7 for 100, because the difference here is 1 times 10 to the second, which is 100. This gives me a new number to work with, 5 times 1.8 times 10 to the minus 7. Much easier to deal with, but we can simplify this further. 1.8 is approximately 2, giving me a new value to calculate 5 times 2 times 10 to the minus 7. Well, 5 times 2 is 10. But in scientific notation, we want one number and a decimal. So once again, we'll do times 10 divided by 10. 10 divided by 10 gives me 1. 10 to the minus 7 times 10, we move the decimal one space to the right, or raise the power by 1, so negative 7 goes up to negative 6, giving me an answer of 1 times 10 to the minus 6. Now, going back to the original question, we have x is equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 6. We want to take the square root of the number and the square root of the power and put it together. The square root of 1 is 1, so that's easy. The square root of the power means you simply divide it by 2 if it's an even number. The square root of 10 to the minus 6 is simply 6 divided by 2 is 3, which means 1 times 10 to the minus 3. And that is equal to our hydronium, or H3O plus, concentration. Another way that you can do this is to think of what you know about a square root. If you're given the square root of x, that's the same thing as raising x to the half power. If we apply this to our number, we have 1 times 10 to the minus 6, raising it to the half power. When your exponent is raised to another exponent, all you do is multiply the exponents. So here we have negative 6 is our first exponent times 1 over 2, which is our second exponent. Negative 6 over 2 is negative 6 divided by 2, and that once again gives us negative 3, which is our answer, 1 times 10 to the minus 3. 
Let's apply this to another example. Say you're told, find the maximum height a feather can reach if it takes off from the ground with an initial velocity of 9.3 times 10 to the minus 4 meters per second. Ignore air resistance. I'll go through the kinematics portion of this question in my physics series at layerforsci.com slash mcatphysics, but for now let's focus on the math. The formula we'll use is v final squared is equal to v initial squared plus 2a delta x. Since we're dealing with height and gravitational acceleration, we'll change the x to a y and positive a becomes negative g for gravitational acceleration. When an object reaches its maximum height, the velocity at the top will be zero, so we can cross it out. We're solving for delta y, so let's isolate that by moving everything to the other side. Minus v initial squared gives us a new expression, negative v initial squared is equal to negative 2g delta y. Divide by negative 2g on both sides and cancel out the negatives for a final expression of delta y is equal to v initial squared over 2g. Now let's plug in the numbers. v initial is 9.3 times 10 to the minus 4, so we have 9.3 times 10 to the minus 4 squared. Divide that by 2 times g. The gravitational acceleration is 9.8 meters per second squared, but on the MCAT, you're fine using 10. We'll skip the units for the sake of focusing just on the math. You have two options here. The denominator is easy. 2 times 10 is 20, but for the numerator, we have two options. Option number one, we can take that square and distribute it. Option number two, we can actually write it out as the number times itself. The concept or the ultimate math you do will be the same, so let's show how to do it by writing it out. We have 9.3 times 10 to the minus 4 times 9.3 times 10 to the minus 4. Now remember, on the MCAT you're allowed to round, so we'll round 9.3 down to 9, and then look for an answer that is slightly greater to make up for rounding down. When multiplying exponents, you multiply the individual numbers, so here we have 9 times 9, which is 81, and then we add the exponents. Since both are 10 to the minus 4, we simply add negative 4 plus negative 4, giving me negative 8, and that will be times 10 to the minus 8. Another option would have been to just distribute the square as follows. If we square 9.3, we have 9 times 9, which is 81. For 10 to the minus 4 squared, since we're taking the power and raising it to a power, we multiply the numbers. Negative 4 times 2 is negative 8, so once again we get a simplified version of this number that is 81 times 10 to the minus 8. So let's continue. Our v initial squared is simplified to 81 times 10 to the minus 8, and we're dividing that by 20. Assuming that 81 is approximately 80, remember we're simplifying, when you have two numbers that end in zero, whatever you do to the top, you can do to the bottom and keep your number constant. So if I have 80 over 10 giving me 8 and 20 over 10 giving me 2, then I've simplified it to 8 over 2. Another way to look at this is you can simply cancel the zeros. 8 over 2 is 4, so that'll give me 4 times 10 to the minus 8. This was a very simplified way of doing the question, but look what happened. I punched the initial numbers into the calculator and got an answer of 4.3245 times 10 to the minus 8. Now let me ask you, was it worth saving all this time to get an answer that is so close even for an MCAT question? Totally. Be sure to join me in the next video where I break down MCAT fractions, percentages, and ratios. MCATExamStrategy.com